all right, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I hope everyone saw, we unfortunately had um, to cancel the Monarch Butterfly presentation for tonight. Your, your mask yeah. cracks, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, so uh, we are going to look to reschedule that, but we wanted to use this opportunity. We know um, it's kind of hard to have a real good discussion on Zoom. So that's what we're hoping we can uh, really talk today. So. Uh, we were, when we first launched this and had our first, um, I think it was March was our first um, Zoom meeting. I know we were all kind of hoping it would only be a couple months and this, since this is kind of the new normal, we really want to have that discussion on how we can really pick up where we left off. We'll talk a little bit today about the environmental activities we've had going, um, but really want to talk about what else we can be doing knowing that this is kind of where things are right now. So. Um, one of the big things that we've been talking about um, is Plastic Free July. So we have the styrofoam drop-off, which um, I think everybody here has pretty much brought some, some great stuff to get back there. Um, and if you have others, I think there's some more coming. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that we're doing. And everyone, if um, we don't have your info, I promise we don't spam you and send a lot of stuff. We don't give it to anybody else. But after each meeting, we will send a recap and let you know different things going on. So if you're not getting those, um, let me know. Check your spam or junk. They might be going into there. But uh, a few weeks back, I think it was actually June 30th, I sent a note um, about Plastic Free July. So there are links to different things. Um, is everyone familiar with Plastic Free July, or should I give a little bit of background on it? Little background? So, okay. So, um, Plastic Free July is a global initiative that started a few years ago, um, and the goal is really to take the month to help educate people on our plastic pollution problem, uh, but also to really inspire people to act and give them tips, and, and it's really just about taking a look at your own consumption of particularly single-use plastics. Um, the issue with plastic is that it never goes away. It just continues to break down into smaller pieces. That makes its way into um, the water we drink, the food we eat, the air we breathe. So um, something we definitely need to get um, a better handle on. So we looked online um, and found a lot of great calendars, but we really wanted something that was more relevant for this time in um, the COVID where you can't take your um, own cup. Uh, plastic bags are a little bit, you know, limited to taking your own bags. Everything's wrapped in a plastic bag. So we wanted something a little bit more relevant to what we're dealing with right now. So uh, that's on our website um, with uh, just daily activities that you can be doing, links to different uh, events going on. So one of the things I did want to mention um, is uh, Plastic Wars is available online um, on YouTube. Again, you can get the link from our website. Um, or the PBS website. And another great movie is A Plastic Ocean. If you haven't seen that, that is a must see, just to kind of put in perspective how bad the problem really is. Um, so uh, that is available for free on Netflix, or I think it's a couple dollars that um, both on Amazon Prime and um, on YouTube. So those are two definitely worth checking out. Um, one of the big things, and I don't know if this is still lit, but yes, yes it is. Yeah. So um, one of the big things we've been working on is, um, you know, we can do all of this great stuff on our own and help spread the word, but really to have a big impact, we really need to get laws in place to help um, really kind of guide and, and move this ship where it's as quickly as we need it to go. So there's two actually great pieces of legislation that have been introduced, but they're kind of stalled. So we have two things, um, and if you have your phone with you and you just hold up the camera, you can scan and it'll pop you right to the website. But uh, one is the plastic petition, uh, which shows, um, there's actually three things that we're focused on. So there's a bill um, right now to, um, we currently are one of the handful of states that has a ban on being able to put single-use plastic bans in place. So if a municipality says we want to eliminate bags in our town, they're prohibited from doing that. So this law overturns that to say municipalities can do what they feel is right for them. There's another great piece of legislation that talks about um, the bottle bill. So on the flip side, we're one of a handful of states that has a great bottle bill um, program already in place. So this would be expanding it to non-carbonated uh, containers. So like your energy drinks, water bottles, to really help get all of that plastic waste out of our lakes and rivers and trails. We know we've seen it everywhere. Um, and landfills, most importantly, or from being incinerated. So that's another bill um, that we're going to be lobbying on. 
So that's the second piece here. Um, I guess the third piece on the, um, the petition is uh, requesting to ret retain. So for the first two pieces, it's just letting lawmakers know that we support these and want them to support those two bills. And then the third piece is requesting um, a microplastic filter on our wastewater treatment plants. So they have such robust um, for cleaning that water before it goes back in, but there's nothing catching all those microplastics. And the big, big contributor to microplastics are any synthetic clothing. So anything that's not a natural cotton or wool has, every time you wash it, little microplastics come off and then they go you know, through the wash and down into the um, water treatment that make their way into the, um, into the water. So that's the petition. If you've not signed it, um, please do that so we can show Lansing um, how important it is to us. The other part, uh, which is here, is um, uh, Wednesday is a legislative day of action. So this is um, in place of an in-person lobby day. It'll be the opportunity to, again, call your local uh, legislators and let them know how important that these two bills are, that you ask for their support and pushing them forward. So when you do sign up here, you don't have to know anything about this going in. So we're partnering with Sierra Club that does a wonderful uh, job in preparing people for these types of activities. So as soon as you register, um, you'll get a PDF that uh, just outlines, so it goes as deep as you want to in learning kind of the background and the history and when the bill was introduced and where it stalled. And, um, uh, and you can link to as well and get uh, scripts. So if all you're looking for is, all right, what do I need to email them? You can copy and paste it, add your name and send it, um, or phone call, same thing, it's a script. So very easy, just takes a few minutes. Um, could really use your support, again, just to help Lancy know what an important deal this is. Um, not just for protecting um, the health of our state and um, humans with, again, the microplastic issue, but the economy as well. And we rely heavily on our Great Lakes, uh, and we need to make sure we're keeping them clean and safe. Um, another thing for uh, the plastic uh, month is we pulled together a green grocery shopping, uh, two pieces. Um, so a green grocery shopping guide. So some things, again, in the midst of COVID, you can can do and kind of try to keep in mind when you go to the grocery store. And I don't know, has anyone been working this month so far on Plastic Free July and have any stories to share on if it was easy or challenging? I don't know. I just ordered online for Plastic Free July and it ordered a case of recycled toilet paper. Okay. The bamboo, um, Lori's recommendation, yep. bamboo um, paper towels, I have those. Yep. I've always been a very little plastic user. Mm -hmm. I always use, I don't use paper plates, I don't use any of that, but I'm working on my friend's campaign, mm -hmm. and I just ordered um, compostable cups to use for when we put water yep. out. Yep. So those will be good this week. Great. So I don't have to carry a big box of all my cups all the time. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's and it's tough because, like you said, when you go, I, I mean, just walking to the grocery store, everything is in plastic, mm -hmm. yes. and it seems anything before. So um, like a loaf of bread that were before you could just kind of get the loaf of bread, or there would be bread in the paper bags. Yeah. Now that's wrapped in plastic and put in the bag, and it's like, um, so it's it's tough. But again, that's what this month is about: is to really open people's eyes and see how much plastic and single-use plastic is out there. So, um, so the Green Grocery Shopping Guide is one piece, and then the second one is a form letter that we have that people can send um, to their grocer. So it's kind of a templated thing with some stats, but then something for you to share um, about your experience and what you saw. And if you're in the store and can take a picture that, to attach, even better. Uh, some local grocers uh, will wrap each individual uh, zucchini or squash in plastic wrap. And so things like that, that not even looking at it from the plastic and waste, but the money that they're wasting by doing all of that. So that information, again, is all on the website um, that we encourage you guys to, to check out as well. So um, one last thing I wanted to mention on um, Plastic Free July was uh, a corporate responsibility campaign. So a lot of the big, big manufacturers um, and uh, food brands, it's kind of the assumption on them that it's up to the consumer to make sure that the plastic gets where it should go. 
and uh, we know that that doesn't always happen, and we find it a lot in nature. Um, and so Greenpeace had actually started this, um, I think, a couple years ago. So it's a hashtag, is this yours, campaign. So when you're out in the month, like the goal is to really flood all of these major offenders. If you find a plastic bag, a plastic water bottle, uh, in nature, take a picture of it, making sure you can see the brand, post it, and uh, Lori has put up on um, our uh, social media, and we can post it again, bring it to the top. I think uh, Denise has posted it on, um, on their Instagram. site as well. So um, check those out, post it, so you put the picture up, you include the hashtag, is this yours, and then you call, so you at and mention the brand. So if it's Coca-Cola, if it's Pepsi, if it's Aquafina, whoever it is, because when you tag them, then that pops up on their stream and they can see what people are saying about them. So that's the whole um, idea is, hey, you dropped something with your name on it, you need to be taking care of it. So um, please <coughs> check that out and uh, um, spread the news, spread the word. So um, before I move on to the next thing, um, is there anything I know uh, regarding Plastic Free July anyone wanted to, to share? I know we had some, I don't know if you wanted to share anything about your observations this month. So we have a friend that lives in an American house, and they can't eat in the dining room, so they bring a meal. And this is one month's <gasps> oh, meal. Wow. And she talked to the chef and said, why, can't, why are you doing this? And they said, it's about money. So if you can imagine all of the presidents there all have this much. They month. have 300 units. This oh is one. Oh, oh my. my. Uh, yeah. So. It's all styrofoam? Yes. All styrofoam. Why well, can't they move to the paper? Anyway. Well, it's, somebody just push them hard enough, you know? Yeah. Well, that's all cost. money. Yeah. So I had one other thing I wanted to mention to everybody, a little yeah. bit different subject. There are three bills going through the state legislature, and it's called Powering Michigan Forward. And the three bills are about solar and renewable energy. Um, when the original law on net metering in Michigan was passed a few years ago, they said that net metering could be for renewable energy, but it could be for everything. It could be up to 1% of the total amount of power for any particular utility. And a quarter of that went to um, a CHP combined heat power, so three quarters of 1%. Oh, well, guess what? We're almost there. And consumers is going to hit it in October. DTE is going to hit it next January. And when that hits, they don't have to, they won't let you hook up. They say they might, but they won't. So these bills are going through the legislature. If you, if you contact your, your legislator, talk to them about them. One bill removes that cap, moves it up to some level. We wanted to get rid of it completely, but at least if it says 10%, you know, that's something. Uh, there's a second bill that goes back to monthly net metering. Right now it's instantaneous. Monthly would say, okay, over a month, we gave you this much power, you gave us this much, that's this. And the third bill takes us back to a more favorable valuation for renewable energy that was taken away a year ago. So just know they're out there. And uh, it's going to make a big difference if we don't get them through. And they're also bipartisan. They are bipartisan. Yeah, That's the on. energy freedom bill, right? That's the, uh, uh, it's called Power Michigan Forward, but it's, it's energy freedom. It's part of the energy. Yeah. They split it up, I think. Recently. Well, they, they did because they want to get the cap one through for sure. Yeah. The other two we can wait a little bit. Uh, the power companies that are blocking. And if you want to send the details and all the numbers, um, I'm happy to send that in the, the recap out for people. Sure, great. Okay. Great. Could, um, you could you repeat those, what you just said? Powering Michigan? Uh, it's called Powering Michigan Forward. It's a package of three bills. They've got diff different numbers in the Senate and in the House, but they're the same package. Okay. So Another thing that we've begun working on is um, our Changing Climate Art Show, you may recall from last year, uh, which the goal was to launch in person in April, and we had to shift, but we had a great uh, online um, exhibition. So we are launching this this year again. So uh, we'll have the materials ready in September, so a lot earlier than last year, but we're very excited to share that we are expanding it to music. 
So before it was 2D and 3D visual art, but we will also now have musical arts and are partnering with um, Michigan Rock School uh, right in downtown Milford. So they'll be helping us with that. Um, we could definitely use your help in getting word out as soon as that is, um, is ready. So again, that'll be uh, materials ready about September. We're going to follow a similar time frame as last year. So January to February will be the open submission time, and then March will be the selection uh, of art. And then uh, April 9th through the 30th will be the show. And we're hoping that we can open it in person, um, but even if we're not able to, we're going to keep our online uh, component because that was um, uh, very well received and it helped us really expand beyond our town and gallery walls. And uh, we had people all over the country that were able to see the art and join in for the uh, um, opening night, so, um, so it was really great. So now we want to try to kick off the discussion um, side of things. Does anyone have any initiatives that they're working on and wants to share um, regarding environmental work or um, things that they, they need more hands with? If anyone has anything, we'd love to, to hear and figure out how we can help support you. No? Okay. If you do, um, please let us know because, again, we can absolutely share, um, share that out with people. Um, so I'm going to just mention um, uh, one thing before we kind of dive into some of the discussion items. But um, with the plastic uh, pollution group that we've been working with, um, other organizations around the state, one of the things that keeps coming up, especially as we come into the Plastic Free July, is looking for other alternatives to um, plastic uh, items. So earlier this year we did um, like the dental floss. So rather than having um, uh, plastic dental floss and in a plastic tube, we had some recommendations to share. I know a lot of you have great things and we do have online, um, it's called a few of our favorite things, that if you have anything to share right now, we would love to hear it. Um, if later uh, you'd like to, to talk to one of us, we would love to share with you kind of our template that we use and have you do more of a formal review so we can get that um, out. So these are things that, again, we've used and like. Um, we know that not all things um, and cleaning always works as great as, uh, as another thing. I know we've joked about the toilet paper in the past. There's um, soft and not so soft recycled toilet paper. So you want to make sure you're sharing the best stuff so um, people don't get turned off from that. So. If you have something to share, we would love um, love to hear about that. Does anyone have anything immediately? Yes? I just got um, bamboo recycled toothbrushes. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah, um, I got them on Amazon, and they're not expensive. It was $8 for like eight of them. And they're not like disposable either. So if anybody wants a toothbrush, I have some toothbrushes. Wonderful. Okay, Dr. Lipper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing is that people would go back to canning or freezing. You can buy so much produce yep. at even the Oakland County Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. um, I can tomatoes. I just got my Georgia peaches. They're all in the freezer process. So you can put them all in glass jars, can yep. them, reuse those jars. You're not using individual packaging yeah. on things. Yeah. Um, and it's really not that hard to do. Maybe that's, we'll talk when we talk about topics, maybe that's an one that we're not, like a, maybe a canning um, mm -hmm. or something. That, I think that would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was going to say, she reminded me of the um, toothbrushes. They have the toothpaste bites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're guessing those. Yeah. Yep. Okay, no one knows about them. <laughs> Does anybody them. not? I haven't them? tried them yet because I okay. had bought a thing. They're, they're called them. bites and they come in a little glass jar and they're just little, little, little mints and you just wet your toothbrush, you just wipe down on them and you brush your teeth so you don't have the tube, you don't have the plastic toothbrush. Where do you get Just bites.com. Bites? Bites. Yeah. Bites. Yeah. Bites. Yeah. Bites. Yeah. Yeah. Bites. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they're on a schedule yeah. and they send you a little... Yeah. A little packet to refill your glass, glass jar. jar. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, and I don't think we have that one up yet, so we can add that, um, and then we include links uh, to where you can buy the stuff as well. So, um, so yeah, we'll add that one on there as well. I've been using laundry detergent that comes in sheets. Yes. That um, is that the sheets brand or a different one? Uh, it comes from Canada. I'm on a schedule, and, okay. then, and it's funny because they they seem to have my schedule right on because like I'll run out my last one and the next one there it is yeah, there it is but it's great because you just rip off one and you 
cut it, you know, rip it into little pieces, put it in your machine, and you're done. We use drops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the dishwasher, the laundry, and then I get the oxy. Too. With the drops, I have a problem. They don't dissolve all the way. Oh, see, mine do. Yeah. yeah, that's what Holly said too. But I get they it's got, like blobs that are stick on a. No, it's no, super it's soft. They actually tell if you have cold water and it's very cold, they actually suggest they address it on their site. They have a little, packed, little like nylon, probably not nylon, but they like, hmm. put it in there. So oh. I guess so the residue is helps it. Yeah, with the little, it's like in a little, it's not plastic, like a but gel the, package. yeah, but it, yeah, but it sticks to my clothes, it's half of my crew. Okay. Do you have a front loader? No. Maybe that's why. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think he's less yeah. water. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, so maybe we can get a details on that brand as well, and you can give that one a try. Okay. So, all right. Any? dry your ball. I use cruelty free if you just buy them on a personal <laughs> class and they take down your dryer time and people don't realize that the dryer sheets actually do add pollution in the air when you're smelling all that like oh someone's you know cleaning it's all in the so air. So the wool dryer balls also yep. um, but I had to go back to throwing a bounce in there because if they would lint up and like on like um like yoga pants or anything that was like that kind of thing just like look like you just like rolled around with a dog <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it could be the brand like they're probably better and because mine were actually i did notice mine were more expensive okay my son, my son said, <laughs> he said yeah. these are great so, you should try them that's, that's a good thing to watch for though but, but yeah. um, if they're more expensive that's do they um, do they break down over time i mean do you need to replace them i don't know i've had mine over a year and my sister says she's had like five years but i okay. would imagine they would i mean one of them is a little yeah. bit softer the other ones are still dense but I, I don't know okay. if you're supposed to like get rid of them and get new ones. Well, that is a good reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Dry you're dry you're using. Yep. Everywhere. Yep. I don't turn into them too. Yeah. <laughs> they make great toys. <laughs> um, you know, just uh, speaking of dog toys and things like yeah. that, I've done some felting workshops, which is, you know, like what, what the dryer balls are. It's just it's felted very tightly. And they talk about that one of the best like bones you can buy is a wool felted bone for your dog because if they can, get, it, it's going to be gross because they get their slobber all in there, but they can't destroy it. Oh, I like that. Because <laughs> so, I haven't found my dogs can't destroy. <laughs> <laughs> if you send that to me, yeah, the dog book. Yeah. I'll check and see if I can find it. I found it before. Just, yeah, whatever. All right, so one of the things that we wanted to talk today about was um, our, green, our Great Lakes Green Businesses Program. So this was something we had been talking about um, through the fall uh, and into the early winter. And we were actually on schedule to launch a just a soft launch the week of March 15th when we um, went into shutdown. So we've been keeping an eye on things. Obviously, we know um, small and local businesses have other things of a higher priority and a focus than worrying about their, um, their green footprint right now. But that said, um, we did want to begin a discussion about how to re-engage in and start to get back into this. We saw tonight one room and one example of a business's consumption of styrofoam. Um, but we were talking the other day uh, in our house about just the plastic because we always say so when we've been ordering online we say no plastic no napkins all that sort of thing and they always seem to make it in the bag um, like no silverware so we know it, it's very much a habit for businesses but if they look at how much money they're spending by making that habit and constantly putting in plastic wear when I'm sure through March and April, probably 99% of people took it home and ate it and didn't even need it. And making more of that stuff a request only, how much money they're gonna be saving. Um, same thing with straws, make them request only. That starting to look at that. So that might be one angle where we're trying to help businesses show how you can be saving money by reducing a lot of these single use and of course having them available um, when requested or needed. But um, so that's just kind of one idea, but wanted to 
to talk and get some thoughts from you guys in terms of um, you know how might we be able to start to, to re-engage this was one of our big initiatives was introducing this um, this program the goal was to do a soft launch in our Milford here on Valley area and then go farther um, and partnering with the um, uh, Michigan Green Communities, who is already connected with the municipalities around town, and we built our program to mirror theirs to really help kind of expand through that, that network. So we just need to, to get it started. So not sure thoughts, comments, if anyone has on, on that. So the, what the goal is to just reduce the use of some of these plastic <coughs> and like a carry-out business or in-person And that was one example. So, yeah, thank you. I guess I should step back a little bit just to kind of give a, um, a background on what the Great Lakes Green Businesses Program is. So this is an area where we had identified, um, you know, certain areas, uh, four areas of business sustainability. Um, so things like watching waste reduction and, and bringing that down, um, environmental impact. Those sorts of things that um, we have a listing that you must complete so many within each of the categories and then that denotes your gold, silver, um, bronze, green status. So, um, so yes, there would be other areas but that would be one example that I'm seeing right now that could be a way for them to save money. So that's what we've done with schools then, is that the same project, the green initiative? Like the green schools? green schools? Yes, it was very similar to Michigan Green Schools, but for businesses. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, I don't know, are, are people's thoughts just kind of hold off a little bit? Do we want to start doing a little bit of research on different areas that we might be able to assist? Has anybody talked to any of the business owners? Are they open to it right now? Because it seems like they're with yeah. And we we have not. So we they were very involved in the kind of the pre and the building of it, but then we just completely stepped back, and that's where we wanted to kind of have a discussion now of um, like I I don't think we feel comfortable just saying hey we've got this green program, but is there a way that it could be like I said helpful for their business right now too? So I think if we feel we have an in and a possibility to re-engage right now, then I think we could go back to those businesses and get their thoughts. Um, but yeah, if we don't feel we have anything strong, then I think we would probably just hold off a little longer. Have we made some headway uh, prior to March? Or yeah. I think Holly. Yeah. So even the here on the Chamber of Commerce, they said, oh, we'll put it in. Yeah. You know, we were on a roll. Okay. Have you had Ah, no. Did you know the businesses that were around? Yeah, so you have to talk to businesses already, right? Yeah, a few that were very, like, about time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you could circle back to those businesses. And get their still thoughts. they're still in existence and get their thoughts yes. well, yep. where they're at. Yeah, I could ask them about it. As far as what they think, it would be a good yep. time to start talking to them about it. We love mm -hmm. that. Yep. Uh, some businesses were already headed in that direction. One was Highland House. Yeah. Yep. Groups. Yeah. There's yeah. another one. The Burger, Burger Joint. Joint. Mm -hmm. uh, and then about a month ago, uh, Jack Towards Brewery elim eliminated all styrofoam carryout. It's all wow. compost mm -hmm. compostable materials now. Mm -hmm. They're eliminating plastic. So there's a half a dozen businesses around town in the area that are already doing that. Yeah, it might be good to circle back with them. That's the eventual plan is that we would then have a listing and a guide of anyone that is um, is certified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to help, because that was, when you told me about that, that's where we ordered that. Because yeah. <laughs> um, we had ordered before and it was, you know, it's all styrofoam and um, so yeah, so that word of mouth has a huge impact. They got great food though too. They do. Yeah. They're tacos. They're uh, which um, one? Draft Tours. Tours. Brewery and South yeah. Line. <coughs> Their, um, chickpea cauliflower tacos are great. Oh wow. Um, all right, so we'll circle back and again, if that's an area that um, is a focus or you know a passion of yours and you want to to jump on our team, let us know. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, what was the question? Classic old condiment. I mean, I think it, the pump is when people have kind of the container or just to pump it right on top. Um, but that's a tough one because portability-wise, yeah, yeah, there's not really an alternative. And then they put it in the plastic containers. Yeah, yeah. or plastic, and then you got the plastic yeah. container yeah. with the lid. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's just order it with it on top ketchup on your <laughs> yeah. sandwich you ask or something for one you get three yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. or a handful like yeah. Like a, yeah. And the so the other stuff actually even when you were eating again mm -hmm. and i noticed that this is something that i don't recall from when i was living back east is that if you, if you had a side of coleslaw or you had a side of something yeah. else they serve it to you in a little plastic. Yep. Like, wait a minute, but you're in a restaurant, you should have a little ramekin or a little, yep. or, or a little you know, yep. I, I don't understand papers. why they would have plastic within the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's yeah, part yeah. of, again, going to the, um, the certification is that's one of the areas and looking at the long term that, yes, there's obviously a cost, an initial cost for those, but looking at the long term, you're saving a lot of money. And it's, it's crazy. Um, we were at a restaurant and there was a t a six of us and I think we had counted 46 containers between like because oh then they bring two so it was everybody had them for ketchup for dressing for their salad and you know it just yeah so you know we take them home and recycle them but again recycling isn't um you know always the best alternative it's just to not have it um instead and so. you can always give the feedback to the restaurants yep let them know you don't like that before all this happened. yep we don't go out and eat that much but before all this happened we went to benzene's grill and um, it's a really nice restaurant and got um you know couldn't eat everything got a carry out and when i i asked the, the server i said do you happen to have um paper or card you know cardboard mm -hmm. box to carry out and he said no and he was he said just like that no mm -hmm. and i and, and he said i keep telling them and I said, well, yeah. you go back and tell them <laughs> that you've got customers that are yes. sitting here that have specifically yeah. asked yeah. for that. And I said, and then that, that'll make your voice amplified a little bit, because yeah. you've already brought it up. But then everything closed down and haven't been back to anything yeah. since. So. Well, another yeah. good thing you can do, too, is just keep a little Rubbermaid Tupperware mm -hmm. in your I car. always forget that. Yeah. 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 I keep glass dishes. I keep my own yeah. straws in my purse. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Things that they're nice because they have like a little pocket on the bottom, mm -hmm. so they can stand up. Yep. And you can like make your uh, spaghetti sauce or whatever, and throw it in there. And then they've got this like slider that mm -hmm. heavy duty slider that goes on there, and you can throw that in the, the freezer and it doesn't leak or anything. Sounds around. like a good product review for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't remember what brand I bought though. Cool. But um, yeah, and I think with all of this stuff, it's again, not to underestimate the power of your voice. And I think I mentioned at a meeting, um, Highland Supply that has an extensive line of eco products for restaurants, um, because they will often cost a little bit more. Um, you know, we had asked, well, when, who uses these and, and decides to buy them, make that investment. And they said, when the customers ask. And if a cu enough customers ask, that's what they move to. So it's making sure. Highland Supply located? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I thought they were off of 59. Road, east side, uh, 1,000 yards north of 59. Okay, so they are wow. right. It's brown. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So whether it's writing on the receipt, you know, um, please switch to... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so that's what I do a lot. Yeah. But then it's also idea. make sure you're thanking those that are using those right. alternatives yeah. so they know, okay, we need, we should keep and doing this. And reviews are really helpful, too. Yep. Like yeah. And the mm -hmm. other thing is, is um, I, will, I also carry my stuff, but if we're ever out or forgot it or something, um, I found, too, if you ask them for an alternative, every place that I've been to has a different alternative. So. I actually asked the kid, I said, can you just bring, you know how they always have like 
aluminum foil in a sheet? Yep. I said, just bring wrap out a sheet it. of yeah. aluminum foil. And I'll that's wrap usually it up what myself. it is. And he said, yeah. really? I said, yeah. Yep. Don't worry about it. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I forgot about that. Cool. Another another thing too, this doesn't have to do with plastic, but yeah. the food waste. We went to where was that we went to? Smoke. Smoke Street. Yes, yeah, Smoke Street. Wow. They bring out your food. There was a mound of fries like this. And I told the guys, says, you know, can anybody really eat all those fries? And I says, well, you know, maybe you could just bring like half of them and then, mm -hmm. you know, people want more they can ask for it or something yep. like that. But, yeah. but that was ridiculous. I mean, how many fries? Yeah. 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 They throw away. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. I just think, um, I'm just going to say this. I, as a personal note, I think if you keep talking about it and keep telling especially restaurants, because as a, I've been a vegetarian for over 20 years, it used to be, you know, you'd say it and the server and stuff roll your eyes, then even turning vegan, people don't roll their eyes anymore, they don't do anything. So it's gonna be the same way with the takeout yep. stuff and the no plastic. Yep. It's gonna just keep pushing it and then it's not gonna be like, oh, this lady's a pain in the ass. Right. You know, mm -hmm. They just are like, oh yeah, we have this, blah, blah, blah. So yep. I, I'm hopeful that if the consumers can just keep pushing it, it'll be cool. Um, all right, I'm going to hand it over to Jack, who's going to talk about a few other, but um, thank you. That was good discussion. Um, and again, a lot of product reviews, so let me know. I'd love to hear more. Um, okay, I know in the spring before this uh, came down, we had some events planned, and one was at, with the Brighton Art Show, and there was going to be a 5K run there. And then we had a cleanup of the local parks we were going to do in the spring. Right. Then no one felt comfortable doing that. and. I uh, weren't allowed to do it, all the parks were closed anyways. So we're trying to come up with new events we can do, maybe a clean up this fall once all the growth, all the weeds and everything start dying off, we can do one in the fall. We're trying to, I know before we shut down there was talk of doing uh, bulk food uh, buying. But the farmer that we were going to use, <coughs> he uh, was no longer able to do it because of uh, he couldn't get his product picked because of what happened. So there was a lot of things we had started that during COVID had shut down. And we're trying to find something else we can do during this period to keep going because a lot of people seem interested in doing the bulk um, food buy. Mm -hmm. We has, must had that's one of our uh, we had the biggest response to that one at our meeting along with when Mark spoke about the solar panels. That's another good meeting. There's a lot of good discussions on that one. We want to have more of those. This one would have been a good one with the monarch butterflies. She was even going to bring, I think, seeds for yeah. milkweed seeds yep. and tell people how to plant their own milkweed garden to attract the butterflies. And we, there's a lot of good issues out there, but we have been able to implement a lot of them. We want to keep people involved because that's why people come here, so they get involved. There's a lot of, we're learning from this, um, but we want to hear some feedback from some people here. What can we do to keep you involved, keep you, <coughs> keep you interested and keep coming here? <laughs> Does anyone have any ideas what would keep you coming back? I know, yeah. <laughs> well, like um, Steve and Janet Crane, they met Mark, and had, now they have solar panels on their house. Yes, we do. We met them at that meeting. And now they're in the process of buying a, a food uh, uh, composter for their uh, kitchen. Lori and I have one, but this came from Ron. Somebody else that spoke at our meeting. She's been at a couple of them. Hers have been real uh, informative to people, especially she planting your own garden. Channel 4 News. Yeah, she was on Channel 4 News today. Really? Oh, so. Nice. That's so, wonderful. I saw it before I came down talking about the and yep. what they've done in the city of Detroit. Community in gardens. Community gardens, and they showed them and feed your neighbors. We'll show you how to plant the garden, feed yourself, feed your neighbors, feed awesome. the oh, food pantries. And I know a lot of people have different Ren. interests here. Larry, you're concerned about <coughs> um, the amount of garbage we produce overall and the recycling, how our recycling is it. And we've been working on that too. It's hard. We had, did have a Zoom meeting. I don't know if you're at that yeah. one. We had the guy from uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rack Rack Sock Rack Sock talking and how difficult it is for them too. And the 
what they have to do through their facility. But um, they're doing their best. But a lot of it has to do with people not recycling the, wrong, the right things. They're having to take a lot of stuff that people think is recycling and they're having to throw it away, but they're using a lot of manpower to separate all of this. This is another reason why a lot of places are no longer doing recycling because they're getting too much garbage back from us. So that's what we're trying to do through our website too is let people know what is recycling. Go to the RASAC um, website, see what's recycled. I joined uh, Livingston Recycle, a few other people did here too. They're very specific what they'll take. One is the styrofoam, and that's why every once in a while we'll do a styrofoam job drive and we'll take that in. But their stuff is all 100% recycled. And the other one that in the area is the uh, one that takes coal. Whatever clothes aren't reusable, they turn them into rags. They shred them and they'll use them for uh, fill for different things. So there's a lot of good information there about the recycling. But it does take a lot of effort from us now, to do it at, correctly. I was at Lowe's the other day, and you know, they take batteries there, not Nikad or the rechargeable. But now they also take those fluorescent light bulbs like this. Yes. Yeah. I really want them. They have these little bags you put them in. They have a center right at the front airlock. Put those bulbs in a bag. I just found it. I read them, you know, stood there and read about it. But it was, um, that was something they didn't have the last time I was there. Yeah, Lowe's. They had the batteries, though. Yeah. Lowe's has that yeah, too for the CFOs. fluorescent light bulbs. Yeah, Lowe's. Yep, they have it also. So in, a lot of place businesses are starting to do that where they'll yeah. give you a place to put your fluorescent and yeah. uh, uh, LED light bulb. And as you find that stuff, let us know, because on our website, we have an interactive, like, kind of other recycling yeah. map. Um, so we'd love to add that as you find different things. Mm -hmm. Now, the Recycle Livingston will take NICAD batteries. Now, you have to put tape, tape yeah. over the and batteries. Mm -hmm. um, and they took them all that we took, covered them with tape. Kelly? Um, I thought at one time we talked about a tour of the recycling yeah. facility. Yes, we that's did. That's a great way to educate yeah. people about recycling. Yeah, we can't do what that. A, when things get back to, yeah. to normal and they allow that, how many people would like to go for a... There, there's a lot of people right. I would like to yeah. do that. It's a great... We're nerdy enough to like to <laughs> well, it, it, it sounds like a good time. It, it was great, I will say. No, I totally nerdy. It, it's got to be better when we went to the waste treatment plant. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, how do you recycle an LED like that? LEDs. I think you do that at Lowe's, too. Yeah. yeah. There, you can't just recycle them. You know, I know they take them for ha hazardous waste. I take waste. them to Hazmat, yeah, that's which I, I know we haven't had for a while. They're having one in Wixom, I think. Yeah. Coming you can up also pretty soon. Take them, it said on their website right to there is it Southfield or Livonia? Yes, facility? to their drive-off. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to mm -hmm. bypass waiting in line at one of the yeah. communities, mm -hmm. you can go right there. That could be something we could do. Do you have yeah. to be a person that is served by that? Yes. 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 Okay, so that doesn't apply. No, that doesn't apply to you guys. To, I'd have to give it to you so guys. <laughs> what you're saying is you'd like to do a drive, maybe do a look yeah, at maybe. doing a are people interested in these styrofoam drives we do? Yeah. Bring yeah. in the styrofoam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, do people have a lot of these batteries? And do they have a lot of uh, LED light bulbs and fluorescent bulbs you want to get rid of? I mean, should we start doing drives for that to get people interested in coming here? If you come here, we can do that for you just to keep people coming. This is a pretty good turnout, I think, for this this time we're having. We want to keep people interested, everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I said, people are here for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, and we have a, a truck and we can't license it until September. That was the earliest appointment we could get the Secretary of State. Oh my God. But um, mm. once that, that's going, it's a Use truck that we could, well, I'd, I'd be happy to haul stuff. Well, we'll take a look at that for future meetings. Uh, if people want to bring that in, we can do that. Um, now, like I said before, some of the talks we've had, presentations, one was by Mark on solar panels, 
was successful. Another one with, that Ron did on gardening and food waste. Is there any other things you guys would like to see us do, get people in the talk? I wonder if you could bring in legislators that are sponsoring some of these bills to come and talk about their bill and maybe um, uh, get something else. Uh, you know, if, if we have lobbyists, we have lobby days, but what do our what do environmental lobbyists do and what do they say and who do they talk to? I mean, that's a little, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's bipartisan. That's a little bit on the political side because a lot of things that happen happen you know at the state level that impacts us in either positively or negatively. Um, I've always even before we got the solar panels we've always like tried to think about ways of making your present house more free and environmentally friendly like not with not just the product you use but also energy conserving. I mean, back in the 80s when we got our first house, we bought a thing called window quilts. And do you guys remember? And it had a little channel on each side. And boy, did we find out how bad our windows were. You know, those window quilts would, pop, would pop out really bad. Um, but you know, like passive, you know, passive things that if people can do to, like, I don't know if there's any builders that would be interested in coming in and talking about, like, if you're doing any kind of reconstruction on your house or any kind of you know, greener ways and better things to do, ways of planning or designing the house, things that you could do it for not a whole lot of money to make what you already have better. I don't know. Well, I, I do know they do have a, what's called a LEADS program yes. that has to do with that type of construction. And when they're doing the um, renovation in hospitals, schools, and office buildings, most of them are trying to go to that lead, which goes as far as anything in your uh, renovation that goes in that dumpster is all being recycled and not just thrown in the landfill. Right. So it's actually traced. That lump, the wood goes to the facility, that's picked out. The drywall is picked out, which some places will recycle. And it's all separated, the copper, metal, everything's separated and it gets um, wasn't there like building standards too, like Nelson or something like that? Nelson is a building standard. Is that something people would be interested in as a uh, green building? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thermal scanning your cuts. How do you do that? And you still have I have you come over as your thermal scam or yeah. scanner. <laughs> 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 they're $5,000 a box. You can get a cheaper scanner than that. Yeah. How to get together and go in on something or nothing. So yeah. Steve's got water. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I, I, I hate the fact, I live in a subdivision where we all have to conform to these lawn yep. issues. So I would love to have somebody come in to talk about a greener um, landscaping. Um, not just for those of us who have to have lawns, but I mean, I'm, I'm trying to skirt that around. I bought some, um, some pollinator wildflowers this year. Instead of planting annuals, I, I planted yeah. wild pollinator wildflowers uh, in various parts of my house. My husband helped. He was weeding. He helped. He was like, you missed all the weeds and you pulled out the wildflowers. <laughs> they're, they're finally in bloom now and they're gorgeous. And so I'd like to see somebody talk about more sustainable, say fertilizer, better well, better alternatives to our standard, you know, flowers and you know things that are better, you know, better pollinators, um, you know, things that that you know, using um, native plants, plantings yeah. instead of yeah, the landscape, you know, the landscaping. I mean, because I want to next year if I if I get the opportunity, I want to start over fresh with my landscaping, and I only want Michigan. You know, things that were yeah. meant to grow here. Right. You know? Yeah, I don't the know grass, if that's ever going to happen. That grass is not meant to grow here. No, I understand. <laughs> I, mean, the grass, I, 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 had this, I had this discussion with the, with the person from True Green, and she's laughing in my face because this yeah. is her business. Right. I, you know, if I, did, if I didn't live in a sub where I had to maintain a huge swath of right. useless green lawn, yeah. then I would have wild, you know, a, a prairie of wildflowers, but I can't do that. But in the meantime, in places where I can, I'd really like to know, I'd like to have somebody come in and talk about, you know, better better plantings, uh, you know, better better fertilizing. Um, well, plus the fertilizing with all the people who live on water around here and how you have to be careful about any runoff and everything like that. Yeah. I think that's another good, most people sound interested in that. Yeah. We've had some good ideas here. Larry? There's something, uh, there's a guy down on Marlene Street, all oh, about two thirds of the way down on the right hand side. He, he does plantings, so that he takes up all the water and he doesn't mow his grass or anything. He lets it grow up. I don't understand it all, but he does. And anyway, that's something mm -hmm. in my very interesting. Did you hear it? He, he let us. Yard go natural. Yeah. It's I mean, you, can't, you can't do that if you live in the subdivision. I see you doing your own. But but there are places, you know, where I'd like to be able to get away down near our lake and like getting away with it. Wait, Larry, Larry's finishing up. A little faster than I could listen, but you were talking about mediating. Well, I'm under, I'm not understanding well, why I'm I'm connected. It takes a certain amount of land to produce and raise a cow, to feed a cow so it can get to the point where it can be slaughtered, that then gives you a pound of meat that you that will feed you. The amount of acreage that it takes and resources that it takes to produce animals that that don't give you very good like return for poundage kind of thing. It, it's if, if we had everybody in the whole world, and I'm not a vegetarian, but if everybody in the whole world became vegetarian overnight, there would be no, and of course you didn't have problems with governments and everything, there would be no hunger. Absolutely no hunger in the world. Everybody would be fed. It just takes so much, so many resources to produce the animals to go to slaughter. Oh, oh, beans, oh, like, yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, My daughter has been vegetarian since she was 11. We went, to, we went right to the, yeah. you get your protein from all, there's protein in vegetables, there's protein yeah. in all, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So I'm not saying vegan, vegan. Yeah. you don't have to be vegan. Vegan is tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vegetarian is easy. Even if people just leaving, everyone went down. Okay, yeah. 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 Yeah.
But then, you know, then you, I always wonder about those sort of farmers and things. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to change. It's always got repercussions. It's always got repercussions. It's a domino effect. Well, it does affect the human Just overall, you know, costs, the cost to, the amount of grain you can have versus one cow. You were talking about uh, native plants. Those are all native plants. I put a lot of those in. Which one here? The, one, the ones that are taking the geese out of yeah. the uh, all oh, the around here on the edge. Right oh. Do you know what they are? Some of them. Joe Pine Geese is one. Um, but there's a. There's your best bet would probably be the Parks and Recs group. Oh, yeah. Because one of the guys on there, John Parks, no pun intended, <laughs> it put together the list and, and, and a bunch of us planted them. And that was like four years ago, and there's no maintenance now. They have roots that are about eight feet long. Hmm. They, they filter all the, you said about uh, things runoff. Right. They, they're made mm -hmm. for filtering, so as the rain is here and sweeps across the grass, they stop it. And they kept yeah. it, like you said, they kept the geese out too. Yeah. 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 I think it might be on the Parks and Rec website. Yeah. 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 What they use, what plants it? they planted. I should look that up. I, I did look Christian at it one day. Yes. Brought that up to us. He did. Yep. And he said where they got all that from. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. um, consumer, I think consumer energy, you can call them and they'll come to your house and assess how you can right. make your house more heat, uh, energy efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For free. Yeah. So, yeah. And that works well if you have an older home. Yeah. You know, our problem was a new construction. That's why we went ahead and looked at the solar rate from the okay. One thing we're looking at doing, as you people are driving around and you go for the next several months, you're going to see a lot of campaign signs mm -hmm. out. We're thinking about maybe getting a group of people together out of our group here to maybe call, get a hold of these campaigns, see if they want us to pick their signs up and recycle them after the election because a lot of these just get left out they're supposed to pick them out but as you all know only about maybe a third of them get picked up the rest are still there at christmas time uh, is that something people would be interested in looking at doing yeah well, I think I add just the other thing is that even within our membership, we could let people know the same thing. A lot of them are, Denise's aren't plastic, but a lot of those plastics, we can, if somebody takes that, like, corrugated plastic, to know that they can bring that to them. Maybe they could get their neighbors, and as many as we could get off of private properties that end up, like, I have stuff in my garage, you know, that's really old, because we didn't want to throw it in. So that's something we're going to look at. We'd like feedback from some of the members if they're interested in it and doing that is uh, getting hold of these different campaigns and say we'll pick your signs up for you but if you want to do them we can pick them up at your place and we'll recycle them for you because the metal wire that they're in the ground with that's recyclable a lot of it's cardboard that's recyclable the styrofoam part I don't know where we're going to talk to a sign company, see what can be done with some of that. And for anybody who's planning on running a campaign, <laughs> just keep the, keep, no, no, I'm saying like, like rerunning a campaign in two years, um, keeping the metal, everybody else's metal stakes and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and not having to pay for them, yeah. that would be a cost saving. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the things we're going to start looking at too. And then, um, we're going to work on getting these uh, speakers in here to talk about some of the issues that you guys have brought up. Yeah. Just want to see you people keep coming here and bring more people with you. Maybe, hopefully, next time we do have the monarch butterflies. Yeah, because she didn't have any to release, so she was hoping that it would be later fall when then she could release them. So um, oh, we do cool. have. Um, the plan is August 17th, which is again sticking with the third Monday, that we'll be back here for PFAS, but then um, talk, a talk, but then we'll see if we can maybe get her for September. That'd be great. So, That'd be yeah. Great. yeah. They'd be ready by then to let go? Um, I, I'm not sure. I think I'll have to check with her, but yeah. Yeah.
Now I know um, a friend of mine bought eggs, my eggs, and oh, wow. made her own garden and um, wow. started doing that. Oh. So you can buy it, okay. <laughs> the eggs yourself and um, yeah. roll them. Okay. Nice. Unless anybody has anything to nope. share. Thank you. Uh, I, I have else? one thing to share, and I'm going to pull Stephen on this one. Sorry. Um, if anybody's interested, like, and you might have noticed that my husband is a little bit of a geek, <laughs> <laughs> and he loves nothing more than technology and applying it to make your life better. And um, we have had the. Uh, the, the Green Panel did a fantastic job. I mean, seriously. They've been great to work with. The, we got ours, they told us that it'd be August, and then they had some where other other companies hadn't gotten um, their permits and everything from, and Commerce turned it around in a couple of days, and they said, okay, well, we can come out um, like Monday. And I'm like, come on out. And that was June, yeah. the end of June. So we got them put up. And um, we still haven't DTE, haven't, you know, DTE is dragging their feet to come out and do the final approval and everything, but they've been running anyway. And um, we have had a fantastic summer as far as sunshine. Mm -hmm. And every day Steve is able to, we got a Tesla power two battery and two to, so we can store it. So if the power goes off, we can, and there's been, uh, day, you know, sometimes three days in a row where we haven't used any power from the grid and um, he has a little app that he'd be happy to show he would love to show all the time about showing you look at the sunshine and look at how much energy we're producing all that kind of stuff so if you have any questions obviously Mark knows what he's talking about over there he's the one that did the whole thing but if you wanted some you know like a not user, working for the company yeah. user kind of information Dr. Steve, it was a, I, I, we don't, we're so happy, we don't regret it, we're able to uh, plug in our car off the battery, we're able to, it's not, it's not a, a, a volt or anything like that, or any, like a Tesla where you get a couple hundred miles, you only get 25, 30 miles before you go over to gas, but it's a game and it's so funny how things and attitudes change, because our granddaughters are like five and seven, and we'll go down to Plymouth to pick them up, and they'll they always ask us, are we still on the battery? Are we still on electric? And then you can feel the car go like this, and it says, oh, we're on gas now. And so it's a big game. It's a big game. So I have uh, one one thing to share. I just learned how to make a mask so free. You just take a sleeve, cut cut the sleeve off your T-shirt, and then you. Um, the bottom, this is the bottom part of your the, the shirt, uh -huh. and you make a voila. Nice. <laughs> you just, I, I stitch it, but you know, you can tie, you tie it. it. Yeah. 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 And, um, so uh -huh. recycle, and uh -huh. it's well, relevant. Awesome. Yeah. Very relevant. Awesome. <laughs> Anyone else have any input? That's a great meeting. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming. It was a good meeting. I'm glad everyone was able to make it. And